claim is to be directed um, to my left, uh, <laughs> my distinguished colleague. Um, I'm going to just start off with, I know um, that you've looked over the governor's budget and we're probably very encouraged by those numbers. Um, I know there's been a lot of um, discussion in the press as to um, the governor's intention. And um, my comment to you, there's been 4.1 put out there, there's been 4.2 put out there. My caution to you, and, and Barbara is going to go over this in more detail, and Steve as well, but my caution to you is that um, those numbers um, are inflated. There are some structural problems in the, in the governor's um, budget before we even get to the discussion. Um, that being said also, um, last year the House made every possible attempt to level fund cities and towns. Um, and, and that will be the goal as well this time around from a general sense, but these numbers are, um, I think, very high uh, than what you'll see in the end product. So, um, and as I mentioned uh, uh, to the superintendent um, at our radio show, you know, there's two fireplaces in the speaker's office, one for the Senate budget and one for the House budget, and one for the governor's budget. But that being said, um, the numbers are high. So I'm going to, um, uh, Barbara would like to explain to us, you know, some of the structural problems before we even get out of the gate. Good evening, everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, the governor's budget is written, I believe, is out of whack by perhaps as high as a billion dollars. The reason is that there are assumptions there that we will receive uh, about $600 million in federal Medicaid matching money. That's the money that came in last year that really did go a great way to help us balance our budget at the state level. Uh, it was not the money that was uh, allocated uh, of which you received a substantial portion uh, for education. That, was, that went to the governor. The governor brought that out to get everyone to foundation level budget. Uh, but this was an additional piece of money that uh, has not been reauthorized. We had hoped it would be in the federal health care bill. We also had hoped it might uh, pop up in the jobs bill. It still may, but as currently released at the federal level, it's not in the <coughs> jobs bill. We may see it surface as, as an amendment. We just don't know. Um, my understanding from what I heard today is that uh, Senator Scott Brown is going to vote in favor of that jobs bill, uh, but there is a uh, Senator Frank Lautenberg who is ill and won't be there, so they're still missing their 60-vote their margin to be able to move that forward. Um, so there's about $600 million right there. Uh, there's another chunk of money in the order of about 200 or so million dollars they're hoping to receive in a settlement with the Social Security Administration. There are many states involved in trying to get this money back, but there's no guarantee that's going to happen anytime soon. But that's also baked into the governor's budget. Uh, there is an assumption that we're going to raise taxes, so-called uh, sugar taxes, uh, smokeless tobacco taxes, um, and there are some uh, other sort of one-time uses of monies that are there uh, that just, um, I just don't think that we can count on. And so our, you know, we are charged with, the governor's budget is an exercise in putting forth more of a policy statement than an actual budget that has to be balanced whereas our charge is very different. We have to have a balanced budget. So uh, the estimates on our budget uh, going into this year began somewhere between two to three billion dollars out of whack. And when you add, uh, you know, the, the pieces in the governor's budget, I would say that, that we are uh, well over three billion, probably about three and a half to four billion dollars. So that's the really bad news, but I think that you need to know it as soon as possible. We do hope that we are going to do an early local aid resolution, which would be local aid and education spending. We hope to do that sometime in March. Um, so again, you will get you know, your dollar figures up front. They may not be what you want, but you'll know what you're dealing with. We could not do this last year because month to month revenues were dropping. So we could not predict um, what we would be able to place into the budget. In fact, by the time the, the House budget was done last year, by the time the Senate received the budget, they had to p take one and a half billion dollars off of what we had done. So uh, while we tried to, we did hold education at, at a level fund. You all know, particularly the mayor, that uh, when it came around to local aid, despite our best efforts, we were unable to give that a, lo a, you know, a level fund um, in making up the difference. So, um, I, you know, in looking at the budget last year, you were the beneficiary of a tremendous amount of federal money, um, IDEA funds, um, Title I funds, 
Uh, I know in general terms the IDEA was roughly twice what your average annual uh, allocation would be. So I think you know it's fair to say that you'll still receive roughly half of the uh, the monies that came in on that. I don't know how Title I will be affected. I assume you must know that. Um, but if you add up the uh, IDEA, which for those who don't know is special education, federal funding, and Title I, it looks like you received about 3.1 million last year. Um, also received about 4.3 million in those federal funds that again came in and the governor gave out to get everyone to um, up to uh, foundation level spending. Um, because we knew some of that money was coming in, particularly with the special ed funding, we did seriously um, reduce the circuit breaker item. I'm sure you all know that. Uh, you had a, a decrease from fiscal year 09 to fiscal year 10 of uh, about $950,000. And currently the reimbursement's running at about 35%, which is obviously well down from our, our historic high of about 72 to 75% reimbursement. So we know that that's a concern. We know that that's a place uh, that really helps many, many communities balance their budgets. We are aware of that. We took it out of there, quite frankly, because we knew the federal money was coming. And there were lots and lots of bad choices. And there will continue to be lots and lots of bad choices. And we've got to make the best of those bad options uh, this coming year as well. Um, so I think that because the governor's budget is really not balanced, um, I, I don't want to count on and bank monies till I know they're really coming in the door. Um, and because there will be a significant drop off in, uh, in federal funds, um, I do think you need to use great caution in balancing your budget this year. Um, I don't think it's going to be easy, but, um, but that's, you know, that's, I guess, what I wanted to convey to you. And I'll pass it on to the center. Thank you again, Barbara and uh, Linda. I'll say I'll give all the credit to my right because uh, they get to do the budget first. So let's be nice to those folks first, then you can yell at me afterwards. Um, but I think Barbara and Linda are both correct. This will be probably one of the most difficult budget uh, exercises that we go through uh, from a legislative perspective. And then as it trickles down to most municipalities, Barbara is right. The governor's budget, I would say, an estimates are up to $3 billion off. Uh, there's one-time revenues that he counts on that we haven't even received yet uh, from the federal government. There's one-time revenues uh, that we're sort of taking from uh, a lot of the quasi-independents to help <coughs> balance this budget. So there's a lot of gimmicks, quite frankly, that are, being, that are part of this budget. It is not uh, as truthful and transparent as I think all of us would like it to be. Uh, but at the end of the day, both the House and the Senate uh, will do the difficult task of sort of putting forward a budget that is balanced, that's transparent, uh, that is open, that everyone uh, could hopefully get their arms around. It will not be uh, a, a positive exercise, but it's one that we have to do. We're required to have a balanced budget. The federal stimulus money is drying up, uh, so we don't have that money to count on again. And even the money that's coming in, all it's doing is pushing off the difficult decisions into the next fiscal year. So we need to make some very difficult choices this year mm -hmm to help us prepare for next year as well. Uh, and we're committed to doing that. I know that we're gonna be facing uh, a number of options in terms of giving municipalities different um, tools that they need uh, in order to manage properly. I know there's issues whether or not we're gonna do uh, the whole idea of uh, health care uh, reform, giving you all the tools you need for plan design and, and the like. So we'll be having uh, those debates. I know members of uh, a lot of the different unions do not like that, but I think at the end of the day, uh, with the numbers that we're seeing, we need to do things differently. Uh, and there's a commitment, I know, on the Senate side and the House side uh, to do things differently and to, and to really make some of these more difficult decisions. But again, this budget that the governor has proposed um, I would not put a lot of weight behind. I would really look and wait until we at least come up with a joint resolution as to what we, what we believe uh, local aid in Chapter 70 will be. I think at that point, uh, then I think that will be the minimum you will receive. And I think at that point, uh, we'll all have a better understanding of where we are. So be happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have, and, and we'll go from there. Just say yeah. one more thing. The, can I just say one more thing, just so we're clear? To balance the budget last year, we had the federal Medicaid match money, which I mentioned. We had the ERA education funding, of which Mr. 